Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I have something very interesting to show you, almost magical even. This is something called a carry save adder, and at this point you're probably thinking, alright, Benny, what is your problem? What are you so obsessed with adders about? You've talked all about the quest for the ultimate redstone adder, now you have another one? Well, yes and no. The really interesting thing about carry save adders isn't the fact that it does addition, although it does. It's the fact that it does addition in constant time. That means this, this carry save adder, for example, is three ticks. And it's three ticks no matter how many bits you have. It's three ticks for 8-bit addition. It's three ticks for 16-bit addition. It's three ticks for 32 and 64-bit addition. It's three ticks for 10,000-bit addition. It doesn't matter. Constant time, no matter how many bits you have. And that is absolutely amazing. There are so many awesome things you can do with constant time addition. And just the fact that you have this automatically enables a whole bunch of really incredible things that you just you can't do as well with any other kind of adder. And I'm going to show you how this works and a few of those things in this video. So here's the trick. In a normal adder like this one, you have two inputs and one output. And the output, of course, is the sum of the two inputs. The problem with traditional adders is carrying. You have to somehow handle bits carrying into other bits, and potentially all the way from the first bit all the way to the last bit. And there's lots of different tricks you can do to speed this up. But at the end of the day, there's a limit to how fast you can make carry. Carrying just takes a lot of time. This right here is using carry cancel logic, which is a pretty fast way to handle carrying in redstone, and it's still 11 ticks for 32 bits, which, granted, isn't awful, but it's definitely not a 3 tick addition either. But why do you need to handle the carry logic? It turns out the only reason you need carry logic is if you only want a single output. And you might think, okay, how would, why would that make a difference? Why would you ever want addition with more than one output? Well, that's exactly the trick that carry save addition exploits. And carry save adders have three inputs and two outputs. And because it has multiple outputs, it doesn't have to worry about any carry logic, because the two outputs, well, they're just two different numbers that happen to sum to the correct answer, if you put them through a traditional ladder. And it turns out this is good enough for a whole array of different addition problems. For example, one of the most common use cases for adders is in a, an accumulator design. And an accumulator design just has the output of the adder bust back as one of the inputs for further addition or operation. And this is how adders are used in multipliers, it's how they're used in computers, it's how they're used in dividers, and a whole range of other circuits. It's a very, very common way to use adders. And carry-save adders work outstandingly for this purpose. This particular carry-save adder design, it can be bussed back to the input in no delay. The only, I guess, sort of weird thing is, since it has two outputs, both of the outputs bus back as two of the three inputs, rather than one output bussing back as one of two inputs. But it's not really a big deal, because you still have one free input to input your new number to add, or do whatever you want with. So yeah, this can add 8-bit numbers together, coming in as a stream, and 3 tags. So you can make a really fast multiplier with this, for example, but just to show you this in action, I'm going to put 
1, so it's counting up. As you can see, this is counting really fast for something that's not a dedicated binary counter. This is a general purpose adder. Keep that in mind. I can put in, say, 5, and now look, I'm counting by 5. So, yeah. <laughs> really, really incredible. Just, it's amazing how fast you can get adders with this. And as you can see, the way I'm using it is I have the I have the carry save adder doing the actual logic, and that's feeding into a traditional adder with carry logic just to get the single output at the end. And that's sort of how you tend to use carry save adders. You do all your logic in the much faster carry save form, and then when you're done and you finally do need a single cohesive output, that's when you'll feed it into the traditional design that's slower, but at that point you've already done all the hard, long math, so it doesn't really matter. So, here is another example of how you can use carry save adders to make something just ridiculously fast. This is an 8-bit multiply. And as you might know, if you want to do multiplication with redstone, you'll build a giant AND gate between all possible combinations of your inputs. Let's say I have two 8-bit inputs. In this case, that means all 64 combinations. And then you add all of those combinations together to get a final 16-bit output. Normally, if you're doing that, those additions with regular adders, you'd have to endure the carry delay over and over and over again every time you add parts of these numbers together. And in 8 bits, it's not terrible, but as you get more and more bits, it gets really, really outrageous. Just the delay of the carry. So, I built this design with carry save adders. A whole bunch of different layers of carry save adders working in parallel to progressively reduce the number of, well, numbers to be added together until finally they can be added together with a regular adder. In this case, I have two layers of carry save adders, each of which is three ticks. I have one layer of two regular adders, which is four ticks, and a, the final adder, which is three ticks. So altogether, that's 13 ticks to sum up all the partial products, which is really pretty darn fast. And in fact, if it wasn't for some other heroics you can do in the 8-bit case, this would probably be the fastest 8-bit adder possible. But in the 8-bit adder case, it actually is possible to get it a little bit faster. However, I have done some math, and for anything above 8 bits, even as little as 9 bits, this sort of setup will be faster than the traditional thing by far. The traditional way doesn't even come close for 9 bits or above. So yeah, just to show you this thing in action, I'm going to multiply 11 times 3. So, I'm going to add 11 and 3. So I'm going to zoom over, and yeah, it wasn't fast enough. <laughs> but yeah, the answer is 33. That's the 32-bit, and that's the 1-bit. So there you go, this thing works. And it's really fast, thanks to carry save adders. One thing I cannot emphasize enough. Carry save adders are the same speed no matter how many bits you have. There's no extra delay at all. This is a 32-bit version of that carry-save accumulator I showed you earlier, except, well, it's 32 bits, and it is still 3 ticks per addition. You can send in a stream of 32-bit numbers at, well, 3 ticks each, and this will add them all together and get the correct answer. And just to give you a little bit of a speed comparison, this is how fast a traditional 32-bit redstone adder is. This is how fast my 32-bit carry-save accumulator is. And that's just adding one. I can add 
anything. I can add just a whole bunch of different switches, add them all together, and start lagging like nuts. Let's put both of these on, sure, why not? As you can see, look at that. It is adding them together. Full speed, 32-bit edition, three ticks per edition. Isn't that insane? So, to close out this video, I'm going to show you how to build this carry save adder that I've been using this whole video. So, logically speaking, first off, logically, a carry save adder is 100% equivalent to a full adder you'd use in a ripple carry adder. The difference is the carry in is treated as a normal input and the carry out is treated as a normal output. So, and you can even see here, this is the XOR gate, and this is the second XOR gate, and this over here is a bit of a funky way of doing an AND gate that's on if any two inputs are on. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's build this. So I'm going to start by building the XOR gate, just like this, and the reason it's a little bit wavy, I mean the wave is just a different way of building it, but the reason for this is this allows you to compact it in a way that makes the entire design both vertically and horizontally tileable, which is really awesome. That makes this a great design for just a whole bunch of different uses, because it can fit so nicely in so many different orientations. So yeah, here we go. These are going to be two of our three inputs and it is an XOR gate. There you go! Now, next up, I'm going to use the XNOR as an AND, just like you do in a carry cancel adder. So, there you go. And this is going to go into the comparator, and this is going to be the AND gate. And now, you might rightly complain that this is on when both inputs are off. So if both inputs are off, I'm going to have this torch that's only on if both inputs are off. See? It's only on if both are off. And if both inputs are off, I'm going to power the comparator in subtract mode from the side, so it's nothing. That way, the only time the output for the AND gate is on is genuinely when both inputs are on. It's a little bit of a funky way of doing an AND gate, I know, but doing it this way, it allows it to be that much more compact, and it's really nice that way. So now, I'm building the second XOR gate, and I'm doing it with blocks like this, because this way, the XOR gate will have a full strength output, which is really nice. That allows you to do a whole bunch of fancy busing and a whole bunch of other things. So now, to get the AND gate to work with the third input, I'm going to need to power this wire through here with the input. And I'll show you why that works in just a moment. But for now, take my word for it. So right there, that's where the other input's going to go in. The other input's also going to need to power this block, like this, so it powers the X... yeah, the XOR gate. And it also needs to power this block so it can go through here and into the AND gate. And this makes a little bit of some awkward buzzing, but that's okay. I can just buzz it like this, lock it off, and there's our third input. And it's important to keep this repeater on two ticks. That way it is fully synchronized. Now I mentioned powering this will, for some magical reason, make it work as an AND gate properly. If I turn one input on, that disables the cancel. The only reason this isn't outputting is because this is off. And that's why this works. If either of these are on, the cancel is off, and so the signal goes straight through. But if both are off, well, then the cancel is on, and it doesn't matter what this third input does. It's just, it's never going to power the output. And it's a little bit of a weird way to do it, again, I know, but this way, this output is only on if some combination of two inputs is on. Doesn't particularly matter which combination of two inputs, 
as long as it's one combination of two inputs. And there, this is our carry save adder. One thing that's actually pretty important to note, this bit is the same significance as the inputs. For example, if all these are representing bit 4, this output right here is bit 4. But this output is bit 5, for instance. Because this is supposed to be like the carryout, this is supposed to be the significance level of one bit higher. So just keep that in mind, that's very important, and it's easy to screw up if you're not paying attention. But yeah, that's how to build a carry save adder. Thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.